Welcome back to Grumpy Old IT, and today we're going to look at OpenSense. OpenSense is sort of a fork of PFSense. Uh, if you guys know what, what I'm talking about, these are sort of firewall, <clears throat> firewall software, uh, open source. Um, PFSense is something that's a little more, that's actually more mainstream, and uh, I believe it was bought by a company called NetGate. And they do make appliances. If you go to NetGate, you can you can check out PFSense and see what appliances that you can purchase, or you can just Google PFSense and uh, read the internet till nauseum about uh, what PFSense is and does and what it can do for you. And uh, so this fork is basically it's a fork of uh, I don't know if it's a fork. I don't know. Someone can correct me. It's not a fork, but basically it's a it's. It's another, uh, it's it's still open source, uh, but obviously it's different than PFSense. It doesn't have the same feature sets and it has certain other things and not certain other things. But uh, the drama around PFSense was that it got bought out by NetGate and now it's going down a maybe more commercially type path. And uh, OpenSense is kind of a spin off of that, but just, I think tries to bring it back to more basics I don't want to back to basics, whatever. Anyways, let's take a look at it. Um, I'm going to do a couple of parts to this video. The first one is going to be general overview of OpenSense. Uh, you can download this for free. Just type in OpenSense in Google. Go and download it. It is based off of, uh, I believe it's free BSD. So you're going to need some hardware to put it on. Uh, I have it running on an old laptop. And, uh, you know, funny enough... The laptop only has one ethernet port and I have a external USB 3.0 uh, network adapter that has been working uh, so far so good. So um, let's get into it. So, okay, then the lobby here, what do we have here? We have a dashboard. The dashboard will tell you some basic information about the system. It's gonna tell you all the services that are running. It's gonna tell you some of the information about your gateway, your WAN, your LAN. It's going to tell you what version you're on. It's going to tell, uh, give you some traffic graphs. So that's great. This is just a general uh, dashboard here. License, it's under, uh, yeah, OpenSense is based on the FreeBSD license, blah, blah, blah. OpenSense, there you go, is a fork of PFSense, uh, a fork from Monowall. So there are some other open source firewalls that have been out there as well password logout we don't have to go through that reporting uh health is going to give you <clears throat> some of the status of uh packets from the wan packets from the lan uh you can see sort of uh these are actual packets so we can go 20 hours 60 hours uh, we can also switch from packets to system memory we can go to traffic and we can see in here bytes per second we can change some of this resolution to get really granular here um, we have some VP we can also check VPN so that's kind of nice uh, insight is really cool this is going to show you the uh, tr basically the the traffic so you can see here in and out this is also going to show you ports that are in use and IPS uh, from the source connecting to the external connecting so you can switch this from LAN to uh, WAN and you can now see some outside IPS things like that. And I have IPsec here. I do have a couple tunnels running, but I gotta be careful what I show on the video here in terms of IP address. So this is really cool. Now you can even dig even further here, go to details and you can dig, uh, let's say I wanna see uh, 3389. Is there anything going on on RDP in the last, uh, I don't know, here, since here, let's take a look. RDP traffic, zero. Um, okay, let's just do, how about we do 443? We should get a ton of that stuff. There we go. Lots of 443 traffic, source to destinations and percentages. Really cool. You can also export this table um, if you want to do some more packet analysis or whatnot. So still in the reporting section here, we go into NetFlow. And NetFlow is really going to be one of the key reasons why uh, I'm going to be switching full-time to OpenSense. And also, I'm looking to migrate some customers uh, to OpenSense as well. Just the visibility that it has, I think, is really good. Uh, depending on what type of firewall appliance you're already using, 
something like OpenSense or PFSense or anything like that may have more visibility into what's going on on the network. And to me, that's uh, very important, especially these days. So with NetFlow, we'll get into NetFlow in a little while. I'm gonna kind of skip over it right now. We'll come back to NetFlow. Um, then you have just basic settings. Uh, yeah, nothing really. You, you, can, you can reset some of the graphing stuff here if they don't generate properly, things like that. Uh, so the traffic graph comes with <clears throat> the default install. NetFlow, again, you have to turn it on and uh, just do a couple of settings, but traffic is really basic here. You can show by interface. Uh, you can sort by some filters, by FQDN or host name. So you know, this, this is just the basic uh, graph that's built in. Let's get off the reporting uh, module and go into system and system access. We have uh, users and we have groups and we have servers and we have another user, I guess, that um, that I created under configuration. Uh, you have, you know, where you can export your backups, some settings here with backups. You can reset this to default and uh, you can get a history of the uh, configuration here, which is uh, pretty uh, cool as well. And if you go into firmware, this is where you're gonna go in and see all your updates for the core product, as well as some plugins uh, and what packages are running, things like that. So if I hit check for updates, da, 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 da. I have to skip over this. Yeah, you can see that right now I have version 18.7.9 installed and that is the latest version. You can see all the versions uh, or all the updates that have been released. Now, this to me is a little, it's good and bad. Um, you can see that there's a lot of updates running here. So you're gonna want to, if you do decide to to use OpenSense, I guess in a business environment or for some customers, you're gonna wanna think of um, the update schedule. You're obviously not gonna wanna be updating the firewall this frequently um, because you're gonna have to have a backup plan if something goes wrong or you're gonna have to be on site or you're gonna have to pre-test it on some other uh, uh, some other site you know, beforehand. So because this is the home, I'm testing this at my house here, I don't have a lot of worries in terms of borking this thing. So I've been keeping up with the updates, but generally I probably, if I had it in a production environment for a client, I probably wouldn't do these updates. I probably would do them every, uh, I don't know, maybe once a month or something. So the frequency is is a lot. So I've yet to figure out what to do with that. And under plugins, we have a bunch here that I have installed, uh, like Let's Encrypt, uh, LTTP. Uh, the Redress is for Net, uh, NetFlow, or sorry, NetTop. Uh, some anti-spam stuff, and there's a bunch of others that you can enable here. Uh, packages is basically what's running and you can uninstall and reinstall them in, in the system. And then settings, you can create a, uh, you can just tell it what firmware mirror to use and things like that. So anyways, you could, this is, this is, you can just look at this and get it and figure it out. Uh, reporter. Yeah. I guess this, this is for bug reporting and then you have your log viewer here. So, and you can do logs based on, uh, you can do searches in the logs and things like that. Uh, gateway. So I have my, uh, this is basically my gateway for the WAN side, uh, log files. There's an HA option, which is really cool. Uh, maybe one day I'll try this if I have two systems running at once, but I don't right now. So I'm not gonna get into that. In routes, uh, I'm gonna have my default configuration here of my routes. Okay. This is like a show route command, basically. A log file here with routing. Okay, administration here. This is where you're gonna set up. You know, you wanna you wanna uh, connect to the console via HTTPS. What ports? You can see all these settings that you can or SSH permit root login things like that. You can have cron jobs, and you can create cron jobs based on different things you want to do on the system. There's one enabled for IDS rule updates, which is cool. Okay, host name, DNS servers you wanna use, and logging, system logging. Do you wanna spit it out to a syslog server? You can do that. Uh, cryptographic settings, this is all, yeah, 
more like system system wide settings here. So it's got quite a few settings you can look at. Notifications, uh, Grel notifications. Uh, what else do you have? SMTP server. I have to blank that out. Uh, let's see. These are some advanced advanced configuration here things. So you get like UDP sizes. And, anyways, you probably don't want to mess with that unless there's a uh, need for it here. Under trust, this is where all the certificates are going to go. So we have a authorities. We have certificates that I have created on my own. And you can obviously uh, revocate those certs. Wizard would be just for basic setup. For the first time, you might want to go in there and do that. Although when you do install it using the ISO, you kind of go through a mini setup on the console as well. This is where you have log files you can view backend, the log files, general log files, and web UI, uh, web GUI, log files, diagnostics. Okay, I don't know, this is just internal stuff. I haven't touched this. Uh, here are some services that are installed and this is where you can restart the services or you can stop the services. Let's say you want to just shut off SSH, you can go bang, shut it off, shut off the packet filter. Um, Suricata is running, syslogs, things like that. Okay, so meat and potatoes are the interfaces. This is where you're gonna set up your uh, LAN and WAN connections, your subnet, your subnet mask, your WAN connection, um, block private network, should probably take that off. <clears throat> this helps with VPN connections and as a requirement for certain other things, you can change advanced configurations here like MTU, MSS clamping. Uh, assignments here is just going to show you what interfaces that the system currently has loaded here, which is primarily LAN and WAN in my case. Uh, yeah, you can you can dig a little bit deeper here into the LAN and WAN interface to see subnet mask, your IPv6 address, packets in and out, collisions, errors. Uh, what's this? Okay, network interfaces, disable hardware, checksum offload. So these are all defaults. I didn't mess around with any of these. Wireless, you can also enable a wireless card if the hardware supports it, which the laptop actually does. And if I wanted to, I could add my wireless interface, which is kind of cool because I could set this up as a separate network completely if I wanted to. Then there's a log file there. Point to point, got nothing there. Uh, okay, here's some routing protocols. Oh, sorry, not routing protocols. Uh, some some other, I don't know what this does actually. I guess this is where you would, where you would add some VLANs, uh, GRE interface. Okay, I'm not too familiar with this stuff. GIF tunnel, okay, whatever, let's just skip that. And we have our firewall here. This is where you can create um, aliases. I was doing some testing here to see if I could block uh, IPs from Canada because we don't trust those Canadians. So, uh, and it did work. We'll go into that a little bit later. This is where you create some, uh, this is where you would, I, where I applied that rule, that GeoBlock Canada rule. So these are gonna be floating rules where they apply, floating rules can apply to multiple interfaces or different types of traffic. Uh, I have IPsec here, which I have two tunnels that are running connected to remote endpoints. On my LAN side, here are my rules for my LAN side. And on my WAN side, uh, here is my open VPN server that I do have uh, opened on that port to accept incoming connections. Under NAT, I have, uh, there we go, port forwarding, one-to-one, -one, outbound NATs. Uh, you have traffic shaper, so you can obviously set up, you know, some queues for traffic shaping. Okay, these are firewall groups, wanna create groups, virtual IPs. I'm gonna go a little bit faster here. We got settings, advanced settings here, allow IPv6. Uh, you, can, you can just, uh, these are more nitty gritty details here. For the most part, I haven't needed to use any of these. Uh, yeah, okay, that's fine. Log files here for firewall. You can check them out. That's what the log file viewer looks like. Uh, overview on actions, block, uh, blocking and passing. So you could take a look to see what was blocked. Can I actually dig down into here? Nope, this gives you a general overview of this. 
and TCP UDP. Yeah, it's nice, very nice. And plain view here. This is basically like a CSV delimited uh, log file here. Under VPN, we have IPsec. I do have, uh, you can go in here and go in your title settings, set up your pre-shared keys, uh, security associations to see what tunnels are actually active, log files. I won't go in here because I have some settings in there. I will tell you that the IPsec tunnels have been running very stable and don't have any problems with IPsec. Open Connect is for cli Open Connect client. Uh, if you want to connect to, let's say, some sort of a Cisco device as a client, you can go ahead and do that. Open VPN. I do have an Open VPN server running. I have tested it with mobile clients. I have tested it with um, desktop clients. Seems to be working well. No, uh, it did take me a little bit to figure it out. Not too much, but you know, there I am using certificates, so I got to create some certificates with users, and we'll go through that as well. I'll take you through that. Um, and your log files. I also have the L2TP module installed and I was playing around with Tink VPN, but uh, I haven't gotten it running just yet. It was kind of just something I was interested in, but I don't know if I'm actually going, going to end up touching that or not. Okay, so under services. So you guys, we got a lot of uh, things to go through. Uh, captive portal, if you guys want to set up a captive portal for wireless access or any, any access. DHCP, so you have your LAN. Uh, you set up your lease. This is where you would set up your leases, your subnet, and everything like this. D uh, D uh, DNS mask, dynamic DNS if you have, intrusion detection. I'll quickly go through here. There are already some preset rules that come in out of the box, although most of them are in alert mode. They're not in block mode. Um, also, if you want to go into block mode, you have to have uh, uh, IPS mode enabled um, to actually actively block things. If you turn on advanced mode, it gives you a little bit better or help gives you a little bit better understanding of what these do. So enable potential and block mode block. This is to block traffic. You need this turned on by default. Uh, it'll just alert you and I'll, we'll, we'll, we'll go into that as well a little bit later. I have the let's encrypt plugin. I haven't, I haven't used it for anything yet, but I do want to, uh, there's a local monit here where you can set up a uh, monit on the system to alert you of any issues or any events pick fail data access error execution fail so that's pretty cool as well uh, ntp okay here's a uh, ntop ng we'll get into that in a separate module i'll show you guys that in a little more detail open dns if you have a subscription you can enable it uh the redis database is something that you need for ntop ng so that's why this is turned on the spam for mail i uh, just installed it because i may want to test it but i don't have an active mail server uh here or anything to to see what uh, how effective that is uh, unbound dns i did have this running but i since have shut it off um and uh obviously there's a web proxy setting you can set up uh, i believe it's an nginx that's running as a web proxy and you have some basic other settings like reboot power off things like that so that is the general sort of feature set gives you a, a somewhat general idea of what open sense is capable of and um some of the features that it has. In future episode, um, I'm gonna dig through some of the more, some of the meat and potatoes of why you would wanna use OpenSense, and that's mainly for reporting, I would say A. Um, second would be probably VPN and um, advanced firewall features. So we'll go through some of that. And then of course, reporting uh, comes with NetFlow and NTOPNG. We'll go through this through some of that. So, all right. See you in the next one.